let, let, let's see how it goes. And we have a message that we are live. Okay, if great. we are live, then let's see. Aha. We have a view, window view live here. Yes, we do. And now there's a small delay. And if I choose here and I share it, da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> let me see if this actually works to share it before we start. Let me see if, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, it seems that is working. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. Then let me start live on Instagram and we will uh, we'll do proper presentations in a moment. Uh, yeah, I'm getting I'm getting the hang of it, you know. That uh, Instagram the Instagram app uses um, usually changes quite a bit. And yeah. they change the place so from the button. They change the place for where things are. Let's see if you if you can um, find my live on Instagram. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can. Yeah? So, okay. <clears throat> yeah. So and then where do I? All right. Oh, we have four people. Hi, people on Facebook. We have four people Hello. watching. <laughs> we are just we are just starting. Okay. I've sent. We are just first. starting yeah. live. Starting. Okay, let's see if your request arrives here. Uh, na, 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 na. Let's see again. Let me send the request to you. See if you if you get uh, my request there. Okay, right, yes. yes. There we here are. Is Jessica. <laughs> here we are. Ready to start. And exactly on time, precisely. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. This Welcome. is officially now the start of this episode of Green Light Other Choice, which will be the ninth episode. And today we will talk about the food for the brain and for the soul. And we will discover a little bit more about what is there to happen and what choices can you have about nurturing also your gut and how the gut and the connection between the gut and the brain is so powerful and so important for the um, for ourselves for the human body and before we go there uh, let me a uh, brief reminder that uh, green light other choice is all about having these conversations about uh, the human experience and how can we save our life with more simplicity uh, i'm not sure um, about you uh, about your experience and about myself I didn't always learn how exactly could I choose differently and specifically about heating. Uh, I learned how to heat uh, the way that my parents learned, the way that my grandparents learned and so on and so on. And it was only later in my life, uh, more or less, uh, let me have a quick check, perhaps 12 years ago, I guess. Um, that I started to discover that there were other options, that were other choices available for me to have a different um, diet, a different way, a different uh, set of uh, ingredients and of uh, food and, uh, of course, of cooking also. And uh, I want to welcome everyone that is watching here on Facebook. Uh, very glad that you are here. Uh, please, at any moment, at any moment, uh, have a reaction, uh, put up a question. If you have a question about your specific situation, if you have a question about uh, the health of your gut, the health of your brain and uh, of your overall uh, human system uh, as a whole, we'll be here to provide uh, useful tips and the uh, information. And of course, we'll have, as always, a pleasant, uh, interesting conversation. And with us today, my guest, thank you very much, is Jessica Canerva. And um, Jessica has a very interesting journey. Um, she uh, worked before also on hospitality management, and she made her way uh, to what she is doing today, which is a nutritional therapist and um, a nutritionist which is registered uh, in the UK. And um, she also has a background, she has a degree uh, on psychology. 
uh, and that's knowledge and that's useful uh, information that she brings in to her line of work, brings in to her approach. And I know that she loves to learn. She, she also loves food and she also loves cooking. So stick around. I, I'm guessing that you'll be uh, quite beneficial. And I just, wait a minute. I just realized that my camera on Instagram is, aha, here I am. <laughs> My I camera was turned upside down. It was turned on the, the main camera and not the selfie camera. So hi, people on Instagram. Hello. <laughs> and um, Jessica has been done a really great, interesting work. Uh, we connected um, a few months ago and we saw and uh, realized that we have uh, common points of interest. We have uh, common uh, ways of perceiving our work, helping people. And I know Jessica really loves, uh, I get that passion from her, really loves to help people to have uh, healthier and happier lives. And um, without further ado, uh, Jessica, I'm very curious. So please tell us, how, how was that leap? How was that transition from hospitality management to what you are doing today as a nutritional therapist and as a nutritionist? Um, yeah, so hello, everyone. Nice to see people here. Um, I, yeah, so I worked in hospitality management and hospitality mm -hmm. for around 10 years before mm -hmm. I uh, retrained. And it was actually like in, with many people, I think, who mm -hmm. work in this kind of field, um, came from a personal um, journey. Uh, so oh. I was quite unwell when I had, when I was pregnant with my first son. And uh, that led me to being quite unwell after I had him. So I had gut problems and also um, mood mood problems, uh, which is, I think, probably one of the reasons why I really uh, feel really passionate about the gut-brain connection today. Um, and it was when I started looking into ways myself to feel better mm -hmm. that I really discovered how how important nutrition was. And I've always loved to cook and um, love food so it became a way to relax and really enjoy what I was doing and then when I had my second son I realized what difference it had made for my health and that's when I thought I would retrain and do nutritional therapy and yes yeah, so that's what I'm doing today. I think for a long time I thought that it was a big change going from hospitality to nutritional therapy but mm. nowadays I think that it was probably quite beneficial for me to have done that before because I can really take my knowledge in food and and uh, so that's what I do today I love to cook and share recipes and try and help people find joy in cooking as well as eating healthy food it doesn't have to be um, super strict and a, a chore it can be quite fun Awesome, awesome. Uh, in a minute, I would like to know more about that. Uh, I just know um, you said that there was a, a main difference. There was a big difference uh, what uh, you learned about uh, nutrition and applied with yourself and you tried it, for, put in practice for yourself. Um, I'm not, of course, all of it, but uh, what can you remember now about uh, how it helped uh, with your gut uh, and how it helped with your health? What was that main difference that you can recall? Um, well, so I, I think it was a mix of things, but I mm. started including more vegetables um, mm -hmm. and I felt that that really helped my energy levels and just feeling uh, better in general. Mm -hmm. And I started um, including more fish I, I love fish anyway but i just started to to really be more uh, mindful of what i was eating and mm -hmm. how i was eating as well um i think when you have young children and in in general it's, it's quite stressful life and you tend to eat in a rush and when you slow down and eat mm -hmm. in a more mindful way that that in itself can make a huge difference to uh, especially with the gut how how that how that is so there were little things and I, I just generally start feeling much better much better and uh, I noticed that you mentioned it with also um, with more energy uh, higher yeah. energy available for your body I believe for your daily tasks and uh, to do's um, if I imagine that some people at home either they are watching live now thank you very much and again if you have a question please do write it down on the comment uh, section um, 
some people might re relate with that, um, uh, with the, the exception or with the difference. They might relate with feeling with lower energy. They might relate with um, uh, feeling that their their belly is full, that their gut is uh, full. Like um, I'm not sure if the word exactly is inflated, uh, but yeah. they, they are somehow. Um, sometimes even they might be obstipated or they might be uh, not understanding exactly why their digestion is taking so long why they have a, a low um, low pikes uh, of uh, of energy along the day and uh, they might lack uh, be lacking choices on what to do differently with their food and with their diet you mentioned that slowing down with the eating because as far as far as i know please tell us more about that there's also that notion that uh, the, um, the the whole digestive system takes uh, an amount of time to transmit information to, for the brain in order for us to understand that we are full. Yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's there's different there's different areas to it. So one mm -hmm. first thing is that we don't have teeth in our guts in our stomachs, so you have to chew properly for mm -hmm. the food actually to be broken down properly. And mm. if the food's not broken down properly, then you're more likely to have nutritional deficiencies and you're also more likely to have gut disturbances because mm. uh, there might be food there that's left and starts to ferment and then it will create gases and that can create the bloating and, and all mm. those things. Um, and also, like you said, the brain actually is a huge influence for the stomach and the gut in the motility and also in the um, um, to, to to get the digestive juices out and hydrochloric acid, so the stomach acid. So the mm. brain will kind of signal to the stomach to to start breaking down the food, really. And if you're not taking the time for the brain to really register what what you're about to do, then mm -hmm. that doesn't function um, as well. So um, and then in, in general, to be in a more parasympathetic in a more relaxed state will just help um, your body to really be ready for eating mm. um, so yeah yeah there's there's yeah. there's def different parts parts to it yeah, yeah of course and uh, like we were um, uh, when I invited you and you gladly said yes to to, to be here today uh, we've we immediately realized that we could be uh, talking about this for a whole week uh because there's so much and so so uh, so many connections between the gut and the brain the, uh, the digestion and the overall well-being and so on and uh, that reminds me uh two things when it uh, that we mentioned about the connection between the uh, the mind the brain and the gut also because we have a second brain in our guts as far as i as i understand I've, as I, I learned about it and um, we also mentioned before about the polyvagal approach which is connected with the, the vagus nerve. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let, let's first go there. Let's yeah. first go there. Uh, basically two questions. How important is it for us as human beings the, that this uh, inner dynamic, the functioning of the, the vagus nerve and the connection between gut and brain, how important is it for us? Um, well, it's, it's very important. So mm. basically, like you mentioned, the, the vagus nerve it actually mm. connects the brain to the stomach. And mm. it's a bidirectional system. So there's signals going both from the brain up to uh, the brain down to the gut mm -hmm. and from the gut up to the brain. And like I mentioned before, the, the brain will signal to the stomach, for example, to produce mm -hmm. stomach acid, which is really important for food to be broken down. Mm -hmm. And um, the other way around, the, for example, the, one of the most important things that they're now looking at in research is the micro, gut microbiome. So they've mm -hmm. been talking about the gut, the gut brain axis, um, but it should probably almost more be the gut, the, the brain gut microbiome axis, because the microbiome is so influential on gut health and mm -hmm. also overall health, because um, the gut is responsible for around 70% of our immune system and it really helps regulate inflammation mm -hmm. and the gut microbiome has got plays a really big role in uh, regulating 
both inflammation and and the immune system that we have. So if they are out of balance, you'll also have an out of balance immune system and an out of balance, um, it, it can lead to increased inflammation. And this can then mm. kind of move further into other parts of the body and, and also affect the brain. So they have seen in research that when the gut microbiome is out of balance, um, that can also affect the functions of the brain. And it can lead to increased risks of, for example, depression, mo other mood disorders, anxiety. So there's, there's a lot there. There's a lot mm -hmm. that we still don't know, but they, are, they have seen that there are certain strains of bacteria that are potentially more beneficial and certain strains of bacteria that are potentially more, more um, inflammatory. And um, so having a diverse uh, gut microbiome is also been shown to be key. And because our gut microbiomes or our gut bugs, they're being fed um, in, 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 to a large extent from fiber and mm -hmm. colorful vegetables, herbs, uh, spices. So including a wide and varied diet is really, really key for our health, um, both for our gut health and, mm -hmm. but also for our brains, because it's it's all linked. I think in the Western world, we've kind of lost the notion of that we're one body and not 10 different systems or hundreds yeah. of systems that are separate. It's, it's all linked. And um, I think it's coming back and it's really exciting that it's being much more talked about and acknowledged. And I think that uh, this crazy time that we're living in, um, it really, we really need to uh, to get there as well to kind of have more of a balance between our bodies and our minds and our souls and just feel more connected with everything. Yeah, yeah, it's starting with ourselves, I believe, and um, yeah, I'm really glad that science is advancing uh, as much and as the pace that is advancing, and we know so more today that we knew even ten years or fifteen years ago, and. Um, for me, it's amazing that we are finally getting to the realization uh, that maybe some uh, uh, ancestral tribes or ancestral uh, people already knew that everything is connected inside the human body. Uh, and they knew it through experience, I believe, uh, through their daily life yeah. experience. And you're mentioning something that people uh, that are watching now or might, might be watching later or listening to later, because this uh, audio will also will turn to a podcast, that uh, we have good bacteria and bad bacteria within ourselves, within that microbiome. Um, yeah. Am I saying it right? Okay, good. And uh, if not, of course, you clarify and you <laughs> specify exactly how it is. <laughs> um, so some people might not knew this before. We have good bacteria that feeds on specific, uh, I would say, ingredients, specific uh, food, and bad bacteria that will feed on a different type of food. So yeah. if we make a, a basic, simple distinction, uh, which kind of food will the good bacteria feed on and which other type of food will the bad bacteria feed on? Yeah. Yeah, so very simplified. I mean, there are a real gray, gray zone in terms of bacteria. So I think I probably should have said more opportunistic bacteria. So there's certain bacteria which, when fed, will have potentially more beneficial um, properties and others mm -hmm. that can potentially be more harmful. Um, and as a general rule, the kind of more beneficial bacteria, they'll be, they'll really blossom if you have, if you eat plant foods. So mm -hmm. plant foods rich in phytonutrients and different colors, fiber. Um, so think vegetables, think uh, whole grains, spices, uh, legumes. Um, that is really beneficial. And I think in the future, I think there's, there's so much research going on at the moment. And I think that in the future, we'll potentially be able to have a very specific diet uh, tailored to specific needs. Um, at the moment, we don't have that. But there is mm. a lot of research going into which bacteria is feeding uh, certain things and which plants are feeding certain bacteria. 
And I think we'll know much more about that in the future. But as a, as a general rule, plant foods, um, vegetables, like real food um, is, is really good for our gut microbiome and for making it diverse. Whereas, uh, for example, processed foods, high sugar foods, they are more mm -hmm. likely to feed bacteria, which can have more, um, like I mentioned, inflammatory properties and have more negative health effects. So limiting, um, limiting really uh, processed foods and high sugar foods can, in that sense, uh, be beneficial and eating more plant foods can be really good for us. Good, awesome. Um, I, we already have a question and I'll read it yep. in a minute. Just f first to uh, let you know, of course, uh, we are here talking on a broad abstract level and we are, of course, simplifying because uh, if you're not sleeping properly, if you're not exercising, moving your body, uh, like we said before, it's all connected. Uh, in our human system, all is connected. Is just uh, It will not be just one thing that will uh, switch and change everything, but a set of baby steps, a set of different changes that will give you a, a very interesting um, change for your health. And um, also this notion about uh, uh, this inflammation that you are talking, uh, Jessica, um, I, I'm guessing that it has an impact. It, there's practical uh, symptoms. There's something that happens within the body uh, and then someone might be uh, paying attention to the symptom and trying to eradicate it, trying to make it go away without understanding that it comes from a place. It comes might be from an inflammation or for whatever it comes from. Yeah. Uh, in your experience and with the people that you've helped with what you have learned, what are some practical implications, some practical experience that people might go through on their daily life of the, of the two ways, meaning of feeding good food for the good bacteria and uh, uh, going uh, on with uh, processed food and high sugar food, like you're saying, and uh, from there causing internal inflammation? Yeah, so I think um, if I kind of... Get your question right. I think mm -hmm. from my experience when I see clients there's a lot of the time. So I, I my passion's really with, with brain and brain health and gut health. Mm -hmm. And I don't really it's not often you get someone coming in saying, I need to sort out my brain inflammation. Exactly. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> there's 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 not really something maybe you look into that much at the moment. But mm -hmm. I do get quite a lot of people who come with, uh, for example, gastrointestinal problems. So it might be bloating, it might be IBS, it might be um, cramps, all, all those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And so many times when they are on a program and they start to improve, they will say to me, look, I, I, I feel so much better in my, um, my, my gut now. But I didn't realize that I also now um, I feel so much clearer in my head. I feel less anxious when I'm at work or I feel um, I don't have a re uh, as much of a low mood anymore. So I think that is a real light bulb moment for a lot of people that they realize that when they change one thing, it so often affects everything else. It might affect they suddenly have much better sleep and just feel happier and healthier. So. Um, it's it's great in that sense that people see um, other other things that also improve, even awesome. though they might have come with something completely different, and then they mm -hmm. realise that it's all linked. Precisely, it's all linked. And our um, our viewer uh, João André, uh, which uh, translating directly to English would be like John Andrew. Okay. Uh, he was he was writing i'll show up his question he was writing hello everyone a uh, question for jessica what is your professional opinion uh, about the relationship between food headaches dizziness and the the amount of sugar and he asks for your help your input about okay. this um yeah i mean so sorry you said sugar and the headache. amount of sugar yeah, yeah exactly so relationship between food yeah. headaches dizziness and the amount of sugar okay 
So there can be, uh, so first of all, I probably have to say as well that um, everything that is said is, is, is um, for educational purposes. So I can't give specific um, medical uh, advice for some of course. Here. But uh, some links that you can consider. So um, as I mentioned with sugar uh, mm -hmm. having a potential inflammatory effect, um, that can then potentially affect the brain in the sense that it will um, create headaches. And also with the sugar, uh, it has a, obviously it affects our blood sugar levels and that is linked as well to headaches and dizziness and you have this kind of roller coaster um, mm. blood sugar rise and drop when you eat uh, processed sugar and high sugar foods. So it's very likely that it's got something to do with, with blood sugar regulation and uh, also potential inflammation. So those are things to maybe look into. But um, but yeah, I can't really give specific details, but that, that can definitely be something that it's... That okay, it okay. Do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to say a brief word in Portuguese, just to ask uh, João André if he's yeah. still here first, and if he's still here, if he got the message, if he got the answer. Uh, então, uh, João André, uh, obrigado pela tua pergunta, primeiro. E se ainda aqui estás a assistir, uh, dá assim um, um thumbs up uh, de que recebeste a resposta e que a resposta ficou clara. Uh, vou resumir a resposta de, uh, uh, claro que a Jéssica daqui não pode dar nenhuma opinião uh, profissional como nutricionista, porque falta-lhe informação para poder especificar. Um, oh yeah, and uh, João André is saying thank you. So oh, yeah, so he got it, he, he, he anticipated. <laughs> I was briefly translating the answer. Uh, so yeah, the, the, of course there are these connections and these links. That, uh, like I was saying at the very beginning, I didn't knew about this before. I didn't uh, knew about uh, this uh, when I was growing up, and of course, neither did my parents. So yeah, uh, there's no way to expect to learn something that uh, was not learned before. Uh, now that we have this more information, that we have uh, so many sources of knowledge, and that the science is bringing up new issues. Uh, and also because we've just passed this special season with the holidays. Uh, first of all, things that are coming up to my mind uh, regarding all these links inside, regarding even the question about the, the sugar and your comment previously about the processed food and the high um, uh, food with high levels of sugar. Um, some people sometimes, from my perception, they 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 try to have this like a switch on, switch off button, which yeah. will be something. Okay, now I'll, I'll eat everything, and then okay, now I have to stick to a diet, and I have to, have to be very strict, and I cannot eat anything sweet, and I have to do this, and I have to do that. And from what I stand, what I see is that people then drop off the wagon again, oh, and uh, it's like. Oh, if I if I had one cookie, I might have, I have I might have more. I, I I can have way more because I already had one, so there's no point. Here I go again. I cannot stop myself, and so on and so on and so on. So I guess my question is essentially, what will be your input about people? Um, I'm not sure exactly the the word if it's managing or if it's. Uh, nurturing their relationship with food and if you will uh, with uh, sugar yeah it's a uh, it's a tricky one i think there's like every year after christmas there's yeah. these diets and detoxes and or new year new you and personally i mean i I'm not going to say that it's anything wrong with with doing that. People should do what they what they feel comfortable with, but I think it's much more important what you eat between New Year's and Christmas than what you eat between Christmas and New Year's. So allowing yourself to have that break and enjoy the food during that time, I think, is really important because, for personally, I've never seen a study to show that having a piece of cake together with your friends or with your family and enjoying, you know, a really nice time together, that that's going to really be very harmful for you. Whereas obviously it's not something you should be doing every day. 
Um, so, but having that balance is key and it's really hard. I mean, it is really hard, especially if you got come into this rut of going kind of all or nothing, like you mentioned. Mm. Um, but to not beat yourself up, I think is really important. And to try and have an approach of maybe thinking about 80% of the time, I'm going to try and eat fairly healthily. I'm going to try and eat foods that are unprocessed mm -hmm. and you know everyone can't cook from scratch and you have to start where you're at so when I see people let's say I see a person who lives off processed foods and takeouts I'm not going to say okay we're going to take all of it away now you just have to eat uh, cook from scratch from tomorrow on that's, yeah. that's not going to work because that's going to be a huge shock so you have to take baby steps so starting with little steps and incorporating things that works for you is key. And whether that would be choosing maybe a healthier kind of takeout as a first step, that might be something and then moving forwards. But I think it's really harmful to be um, really hard on yourself and, you know, not allowing yourself to enjoy a nice food as well, because Yes, it might be that sugar has an inflammatory effect at times, but um, but it's it's not going to kill you if you have it every now and then. So it's it's really important to try and have that balance and to maybe 80% of the time try and eat healthily and then 20% of the time allow yourself to really just eat whatever you want. But yeah, it is hard to find that balance, but that's yeah, what sure, I try sure. and work with. That, that's with. part of a big why you do uh, 101 uh, um, work. Because it's so yeah. personalized to the unique, uh, um, unique situation, the unique context uh, that the person uh, is living, and of course their genetics and their predispositions and so on and so on, and also, um, yeah. Uh, let me first say this: uh, that totally resonates with me, because the way I see it, uh, instead of taking away choice and even leaving the person even more limited, perhaps. Uh, you're doing what I believe, which is to provide and to enable more choices of quality, of, prefer of preference. But if the person has more choices, then she can adapt and choose which one uh, can um, be useful at the moment that she's at. And uh, that reminds me also, uh, we started also uh, talking about uh, uh, you becoming uh, associated with the Green Light Transformation Walk, the program that I delivered, uh, deliver. Uh, to enable people to get their transformation, to lead and savor their lives uh, while we are walking on ancestral trails um, for now on Camino de Santiago. But later on, as you know, we'll be doing that here in Portugal and uh, looking forward for traveling uh, even in the UK. Uh, so um, it came to my mind exactly that, like you were saying, some people have their life, uh, their, their routines and they have their life programmed uh, to, for for example, take out, and uh, also another condition different um, is when we are walking, for example, on the Camino de Santiago, we have less options than if we will be at home and we'll go to the local market, buy the local groceries, local le uh, legumes, and so on and so on. Uh, sometimes that that uh, is possible to buy local and to cook our own food. Other times it's not. And uh, I, I remember specifically, this was, I believe, the, the last edition of the program. We entered a small cafe uh, in the middle of the morning. And uh, I looked to the, to the balcony when, where they, they have the, not the balcony, sorry, the, um, where they have the food, the, the options uh, on that cafe. And there was like uh, sandwiches of ham, cheese, uh, maybe two or three types of uh, sweets, uh, like pastry sweets. And um, asking, okay, what else? Is, what else do you have? Because I usually do that question. Of course, they had uh, an omelette, a French omelette. They had uh, um, the, the Spanish tortilla, and uh, I don't know what else. I'm not sure if they had bacon or whatever. But they have like very few options. And uh, when the options are those, uh, we are a little bit more limited, right? Yeah. So, what will be your suggestion? And uh, Everything is valid, okay? What would be your suggestion to uh, adapt and have a small change instead of eating uh, processed foods, instead of eating high uh, sugar uh, foods? 
Um, well, I mean, little changes can be to swap the, like if you have uh, white bread, maybe for whole grain mm -hmm. uh, bread mm -hmm. and the same with pasta and rice. And maybe also trying to um, include some vegetables when you can. So even if you might have a, a um, like a ready-made meal, a, a microwaved meal or a takeout, you might have some fresh vegetables at home or that you mm -hmm. can just chop up and have on the side. Or you can even ask for that with a, with a takeout if they have an option with some vegetables to get that as well. Um, but yeah, little things, I think, to swap the, the kind of white um, foods, the white bread, the white pasta, the white rice, if possible yeah. for more whole grain versions. And uh, yeah, just do little swaps when you can, but not to also feel anxious about it. I think that's really important. Yeah. If you don't have an option to have something else, then not, not to feel too anxious about it, because yeah. I, I think it's more important to include rather than exclude. So I always try to include more foods with more more vegetables for example with a client rather than just focusing on removing things that they might love because then it becomes really negative i think for for a client um moving forward whereas including more feels more positive at least for me <laughs> awesome awesome i, I subscribe that. Uh, that that i believe that that will be one pearl one treasure to take away from this uh, conversation <laughs> instead of excluding include include yeah. uh, more alternatives include more vegetables include more uh, of uh, what is missing we have another question uh, also yeah. again from uh, joan andre and he asks uh, what will be examples of foods to lower the stress what will be uh, a secret that you can share now okay so it's probably going to sound a bit like a broken record but it's it's as well the the sugar because um, uh, or high sugar foods, refined um, foods, because it does affect stress levels, affects uh, the stress hormone cortisol, for example, which, mm -hmm. which has um, effects on our body. So um, I would say to lower the sugar for that, in, in that sense. <laughs> okay okay awesome uh, i'm guessing that for you um and please say otherwise if so i'm guessing that for you uh refined and high level sugar will be like the traditional cookie that people take from the the, the packet and uh, sometimes they don't eat one they might eat six seven eight ten <laughs> well, yeah. whatever whatever it is um and instead of that, what could they do? They, they, I don't know. Uh, for some people, like the replacing that with fruit, for some people that the, doesn't work. Yeah. For like you're suggesting, instead of excluding, uh, the person might focus on um, uh, trying um, on experimenting to eat just two or three, and then starting to reduce. I don't know. Tell me what is your experience. What will be your uh, your inclusion there? yeah so i think with um yeah i mean obviously there's there's healthier options than maybe um a cookie but mm -hmm. i think that also with for example high glycemic or high sugar foods if you include mm -hmm. something that's high in protein or something that's a bit higher in fat that actually helps lower that steep blood sugar rice mm -hmm. so even if you have a cookie to maybe have something together with it that has some protein or fats in it obviously there's fat in the in the cookie but for example to have a few nuts um something like that to to balance it and if mm -hmm. you have uh fruits 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 natural sugar but it's still sugar so if you, sh you should maybe not eat too much uh fruit at the same time because it will still affect your blood sugar levels but if you do have sugar to have it together with something uh like some nuts or uh, yeah something like that that will kind of steady that blood sugar that will also affect the the stress as well from um, the the question that we just had that is one thing that very simple trick to do to try and have protein with every meal so even if it's a slack snack um mm -hmm. to include something that will then help make sure that your blood sugar throughout the day is more steady 
Okay, awesome, awesome. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, good, good learnings, good sharings that we are getting to. And thank you again for the question. If please, if uh, who is watching now, if you have a question about your gut health, about food for your gut, food for your brain, uh, please ask your question now, and we'll come back to it in uh, in a minute or two. And uh, that reminds me, Jessica, that uh, we are more or less uh, about ten minutes to close our conversation, and. Um, what has been your your um, I will not say your main your big 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 discovery or big learning, but when you look back, what has been one learning that has been standing out from the others? Um, in what sense do you mean? And just in general or in nutritional therapy? In nutrition, yes, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think really the importance of um, the gut microbiome. And also with balancing blood sugar, what, what an importance blood sugar is for everything as well. Um, so I think, yeah, I think the gut microbiome, how important it is and how, how important it's probably going to be in the future. We're going to find out a lot more about it. Yeah, because as far as I understand, the, let, let me know um, what else is there or um, if you can bring any practical example uh, that people can relate with the, with their lives. Um, the gut microbiome also produces um, some um, some nutrients or some uh, I don't know exactly the, the the scientific term I don't remember now but that they are essential for our immune system and for our general well being. Yeah, well, um, so I think one of the so one of the real practical ideas that I would uh, I would suggest would be to um, so for example one of the biggest mm -hmm. or the, the biggest um, study international study in the microbiome mm -hmm. found that people who eat um, thirty plant foods or more per week have a more diverse and healthier um, microbiome and it might sound like a lot but this takes into consideration all plant foods so it's fruits vegetables herbs spices uh, legumes yeah. whole grains so if you think about that um and it's it's a quite it can be a quite interesting task to do to actually during one week maybe write down uh, kind of try and remember what what foods you've had mm -hmm. to see how many you add up during that week and to try and aim for around 30 or more possibly more um, if you can yeah it's great but 30 at least I think that is a really good step towards um, really trying to um, make your gut microbiome as, as healthy as possible um, um, yeah first of all that, that reminds me uh, I'll, I'll challenge accepted <laughs> I'll, I'll do that exercise in the in, the, in this week ahead um, and also that reminds me that th there's this funny picture that popped up in my mind where there's like the um, uh, people, uh, I uh, made a personal choice of not eating meat, occasionally I still eat fish and uh, I'm, finally, I'm finding my balance, I'm finding my, my way of being healthy and feeling with energy. Uh, so there was this picture about uh, someone that eats meat to someone that only eats vegetables and it's like, okay, but what do you eat? And the people that eat meat usually go for pork, cow, chicken, whatever it is. And then, and how about you? And it's like this um, um, photo from the top of a local market with all the, the 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 boxes and all the types of different vegetables and legumes, and it's like dozens and dozens and dozens with the the, the beans and the all, all, all that is there. So it's, yeah, just. Just thought it's, it's a funny picture. It's a funny yeah. question <laughs> to bring up. Um, but that reminds me that we, uh, and of course, this might be redundant, uh, and I'll go back to it, which, because you mentioned depression. And um, during the last months, we have been having, been having a really hard times, uh, some more than others, of course. Someone uh, like myself with a lower activity, because I delivered this uh, green light transformation walk. Which of course involves gathering a small group, it's an exclusive uh, for small groups only, but involves traveling and involves uh, growing together and transforming together. So that was not possible. And uh, many people are feeling anxious when with higher levels of stress and uh, uh, how things are being hard uh, uh, at home and within themselves. 
and some have been uh, in a lower moods and some even with depression. When we talk about um, uh, eating better or eating healthier or however the person wants to put it, uh, I believe you, I'm not sure if at the beginning of the call, I don't remember already, or if it was yesterday, you mentioned about the connection that there is with depression. I, I seem to remember that you mentioned a study that there were these different approaches and one that involved nutrition got a very different kind of results. Yeah, so I think the one that we were talking about was called the SMILES trial. Mm -hmm. And um, it, this is a, it's a few years ago, and mm -hmm. I believe it was done in Australia and New Zealand. And they looked at what difference it would make um, for, so they had a control group and an experimental group. So the control group, they um, were all people who suffered from either kind of medium to um, severe depression. Mm -hmm. And um, the control group, they had talking therapy. And then it was the experimental group who had talking therapy, but also had nutrition, nutritional guidance. Um, and it was a 12 week trial, I believe it was. And at the end of this trial, they could see a really significant change um, and difference between the two groups, meaning that the group who had the nutritional interventions, they had much they'd really improved their depression scores. And um, they followed kind of like a, there's a lot of talk at the moment about Mediterranean diet mm -hmm. uh, or Mediterranean style diet was this one where they had a lot of plants, so a lot of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes, uh, fish. Fish is really important um, for our brain health. Um, mm -hmm. That is something I've worked with quite a lot and I'm really passionate about and olive oil. So, um, you know, there is a lot of, and there's also a, a very recent study that looked at uh, following the Mediterranean diet and how, how helpful it was with both improving and preventing depression, for example. So um, there's, I think there's definitely some takeaways to take from those studies in terms of um, mental health and mm -hmm. the foods that we eat, definitely. Awesome. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, like we said in the beginning, we could be here talking for a whole week or more, uh, discussing all these connections and the, the, the great and healthy impact that uh, other foods and other um, nutrition can have, uh, can have, no, as on our bodies. Um, just before we go, um, uh, if uh, of course, if anyone has uh, one more question, a question about food for the gut, food for the brain, food for the soul, uh, and uh, as a situation that wants to bring up, please write now in the comments and uh, we'll manage to have like 30 seconds or a little bit more to expand on that, um, on that answer. Uh, before we go, and before that question that might appear, uh, we'll be willing, Jessica, to ask for, uh, for uh, like lightning flash questions and uh, see what comes up from yeah, sure. your experience. That's fine. Yeah, That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Let, let's do it then. And uh, just before we finish, I will have one last question. And uh, then if there's no questions from whoever is watching now and who else has just joined, welcome. Uh, we can, you can go back uh, after this video and this live is done. Uh, so Jessica, here, here we go. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tell me. Um, yeah, let's go. With, let's go with this one. Uh, what have you learned about yourself looking at others? Oh, looking at others. That um, we're all very similar. We all have the same needs. True. I believe that also. I believe that also. Thank you. Um, do you see yourself the other way that others see you? Oh, in what way do you mean? Um, you know that I, people gain gain that perception of of you. Yeah, I, th I think I think I do. I think I see myself quite similar to how other people see mm -hmm. me. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
And if not, it's okay. It's yeah. just, uh, yeah, <laughs> good, good to know. Um, how do you imagine um, uh, the world that we are living in? How do you imagine to, to be, uh, say, in 10 years' time? Um, I hope that it's more connected. I hope that um, healthcare in particular is more integrated. I hope that we're more connected with who we are and that um, we use, especially I think for me being in healthcare, I really hope that that we'll mm. use other th a lot of things to help ourselves feel better, like nutrition, lifestyle, uh, medication when needed and, um, mm -hmm. and, and all sorts of things, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, which uh, superpower do you have and you would like to share it with everyone that you that you meet? Oh God, superpower. Um, I don't know if it's a superpower, but I think I'm a quite good cook. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> So if, if you like like a magic wand, you just uh, share it away. That uh, that cooking superpower. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it okay. might help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, 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 let's see. Let's see if uh, from uh, from here uh, people get more curious about uh, learning how to cook differently and how to feed themselves differently. And um, when uh, yeah, a, a previous one. Uh, if you would write um, a letter to humanity, a letter to be read in 100 years, what would you oh, wow. write? Um, slow down. Well, I mean, we've had to do that now, but yeah, slow down. Take time to reflect. Mm. Which, uh, funny enough, and yeah, I also sub subscribe that. Thank you for sharing. Uh, that also connects with what we talked about before, about slowing down while eating. And uh, also with the our uh, life inner rhythm, right? The human body has their own rhythms, and uh, yeah, slow down seems like another very good treasure takeaway from this conversation. Uh, thank you. Um, what what did you what, with what you know now? Uh, what do you wish you had learned when you were chi you were a child? Oh dear. Um sleep more <laughs> oh wow i did not sell, saw that coming yeah no i think uh yeah well i mean as a child yeah maybe not as a child i think i was all right sleeping then but no i'm, I'm gonna say that still i think of myself yeah. kind of yeah younger adult sleep more <laughs> awesome Awesome. Good to know. And um, so uh, let me just quickly check with our audience on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, if you have a, a question or, or a situation that you want, you want to bring up, we still have like one minute uh, before we go. Uh, write your question here and uh, I will ask Jessica uh, what you like to know about the impact of food on our guts, on our brains, on our general well-being. Uh, if you have a question, this is the moment before we go offline. Um, and if not, uh, I'll ask uh, the, the, last, the very last question that I usually ask my guests, which is, um, if, um, so first of all, imagine the person, a person that is uh, holding, uh, is uh, somehow stuck in their life, is a person that is... Uh, uh, struggling with uh, whatever issue, and um, she's waiting to move on. What will, will be your green light, the green light that you will give that person to move on? What do you mean with, with green light? What, in, in what sense do you mean? Sorry. Something that you will say to the person or something okay, that you will do okay. uh, that will be the green light for that person to move on. Um... Breathe, practice breathing, mm. very powerful. <laughs> I hope that helps. Yeah, no, I, I'm really taking a moment because uh, I just heard that like two hours ago from uh, one of my masters, uh, Stephen Gilligan, uh, which is of course uh, informs and influences a lot of my approach. And since we already talked before uh, about how all of this is connected, 
and there's all these links uh, within us. Uh, and some people forget sometimes to breathe in ways that support the experience that they want to have, that uh, increase the quality of life that uh, that they want. And yeah, that, that seems like really a, a golden key to, to close this, uh, this live talk, which is always remember to breathe. breathe. Yeah. Yes, it sounds so simple, but it's so important. And I think in a way we've kind of forgot how to do it. Me, myself mm -hmm. included. <laughs> Yeah, I also sometimes I also include myself. I I, ca I caught myself uh, from time to time. Oh yeah, here I go again in this breathing pattern. Maybe it's time to take a step back and breathe in a totally different way. Um, which is of course something we also do in green in the green light transformation walk. And um, just a brief note, if you want to comment, of course. Uh, the breathing with the eating is strongly connected, right? Sometimes people are eating and they somehow forget the way that they are breathing. Well, I think <clears throat> taking the time to at least breathe and calm down before you eat, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's really mm -hmm. powerful for really getting into that relaxed parasympathetic uh, sorry in, in the in the relaxed state mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah it's very important for digestion and for how we absorb our nutrients and, and everything and um, by doing that we can we can feel a lot better it sounds so simple but yeah it's powerful yeah exactly and I, I like simple and powerful I, I, I like when we can help people to gain more choices to live their life with more quality and uh, healthier and happier and with simple, simple changes, simple actions, okay. baby steps, like you also invited people before. And if you just joined in, uh, we are sadly going to an end now. But of course, you can go back. You can go back and see this uh, video on the IGTV uh, at greenlight.joan.pombeiro. And uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, connect with me on LinkedIn, if that makes sense to you. And uh, Jessica, where can people find you? Where can people connect with uh, what you share? Uh, yeah, so I think potentially the best place to find me would be Instagram. So mm -hmm. I'm at Jessica Canava, and I'm also on LinkedIn under that name mm -hmm. and Facebook as well. So, uh, so yeah, that's where they can find me. I have a website as well, uh, mm -hmm. www.jessicacanerva.com, where you can find out a bit more about me and what I do and the services that I provide for people and companies. Well. Jessica, thank you very much for your time, okay. for your sharing your, your knowledge and all this conversation. Thank you again to João André for the questions and for you that are, that, um, uh, are watching. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this was the ninth episode of Greenlight Other Choice Lives and Podcast. And we'll be back next week, next week in Portuguese, uh, with the team yet uh, to be revealed. And looking forward to meet you again. Looking forward to talk with you again, Jessica. Uh, so for thank you so back home. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Well, bye-bye for now. Bye-bye, everyone.